Good evening. Exciting things have been happening on the island of La Palma in the Canaries, where we had first light on the INT, or Isaac Newton Telescope, where the great new observatory is being set up. Well, the INT has a mirror over 100 inches in diameter, and we've now got the first pictures, and I thought you'd like to see one. This, in fact, shows a spiral galaxy. It's the Whirlpool Galaxy and the Hunting Dogs. You can see there a tremendous amount of detail. And this, surely, is a very suitable picture to show because this was the first spiral ever to be recognized by Lord Ross way back in 1845. I have no doubt that great developments are going to come from La Palma in the very near future, but we are going to do a major program from the observatory itself very shortly. So, for the moment, I want to turn to something else where also there have been very interesting developments, and that is the planet Venus. We've had a very nice display of planets in the morning sky for some months past, and Venus has been there, shining more brightly than any other. I'm afraid it's more or less disappeared now, because it um, doesn't rise very long before the sun. But I did make a drawing of it the other morning with my 15-inch reflector, and that is it. And as you can see, it doesn't show very much, and that really isn't my fault. It shows the characteristic phase. Venus is a bit away from full. And you can just about see a cloudy streak there, which, frankly, I exaggerated, because otherwise it wouldn't have shown up on the drawing. But that is all. And, of course, Venus is always a problem because we can't see through its dense, cloudy atmosphere. And before the space age, we knew very little about it. All you can normally see is the characteristic phase. Now, Venus is closer to the sun than we are. Average distance only 67 million miles, as against our 93 million. And of course, like all the planets, it shines by reflected sunlight. And so when its dark side is turned towards us, we can't see it at all. And Venus is new. And you can see that in the diagram. The sun in the middle orbits of Venus and the Earth. And the open circle shows Venus in the new position. When the maximum angular distance from the sun uh, is there, Venus appears as a half. And when Venus is on the far side of the sun, it's full, but then, of course, it's all is behind the sun, and virtually it's out of view. And it's going that way now, so we won't see Venus well again for a bit, and then it will re-emerge as a brilliant object in the evening sky. And that really is about as much as we knew. We did know that the atmosphere of Venus is not like ours. Our atmosphere is made up chiefly of um, oxygen and nitrogen, and that of Venus is made up chiefly of carbon dioxide, which is a heavy, choking, unbreathable gas, and also acts in the manner of a greenhouse and shuts in the sun's heat. Now, Venus is considerably closer to the sun than we are, and with that kind of greenhouse atmosphere, you would expect the surface to be very hot. But we didn't know quite how hot, and we weren't even sure whether Venus had a lot of ocean on it or whether it was simply a wild dust desert. We didn't even know the length of the rotation period. So Venus was very much a planet of mystery, and even though it's the closest of all the planets, much closer than Mars, and even though in size and mass it's very like the Earth, it really was a problem. And then, in 1962, we had the first real information sent back from the probe Mariner 2, which was actually the first successful planetary probe ever sent up. And it sent back a lot of information, not all of which was welcome. For example, Venus really is hot. The surface temperature is of the order of 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the clouds are made up very largely of sulfuric acid, and the atmospheric pressure is about 90 times the pressure of the Earth's air at sea level. So, in fact, Venus turned out to be a very unwelcoming world, and there was certainly no chance of having oceans on the surface. And that was really quite a disappointment. We thought that there might be oceans there, and that even there might be primitive life, but that turned out to be not the case. The clouds look lovely when you see them through a telescope, and that's a drawing by Paul Dirt. He made actually with his 10-inch telescope, but uh, they are not really very welcoming. And then later on, we had more direct information still, because the Russians took a hand. Now, the Russians have sent up plenty of planetary probes. Oddly enough, they've had no success at all with Mars, but they have had plenty with Venus. And they've actually managed to land probes on the surface and uh, keep them there, and so they can continue to transmit for well, an hour or two before being put out of action by the intensely hostile conditions. And that's an impression of one of Russia's Venera probes standing on the surface. But it certainly doesn't look like that now. It would have been corroded away long ago. And although the winds on the surface of Venus are pretty sluggish, only a few knots, in that very thick atmosphere, they must have tremendous force. But the Veneras have sent back actual pictures from the surface. And here's rather a good one. This comes from the probe Venera 13. And you can see there a gloomy, orange, rock-strewn landscape under an orange sky. And there is part of the spacecraft itself, as desolate as it could possibly be. And in fact, the ground must glow, dull, glow dully. And of course, everything is orange, a very strange kind of situation. And then the Americans have done different things. They've actually sent probes and put them into paths around Venus, and they've mapped the surface by radar. 
and the best maps have come from the American pioneer, which has been going around Venus now for some time, and has provided radar maps of a large part of the surface. So at last we know what the surface of Venus is like, and here is a map. Only I don't want you to be misled. It looks rather bare as though you've got land and sea, and of course you haven't, because there's no chance at all of having any water on a surface so fiercely hot as that of Venus. This is merely a contour map. The blue areas are low, and the yellow and the red are higher. And you can see there that Venus has got a large rolling plane going right round the planet, and there are two main highland areas, known as Ishtar and Aphrodite, which, uh, if you like, uh, you can call continents, although, of course, they're not the same as our own continents, and the whole situation there is very different. We'll come to that in a minute. Well, these pioneer radar maps have told us more about Venus than we dreamed that was possible. But the Russians also have joined in, and they have now dispatched Venera 15, which is another radar mapping probe. That's a photograph of it they sent us because before the probe was launched. And that was going around Venus, in fact it still is, and that's sending back very interesting pictures indeed. And here are two of the new Russian pictures, and they show obvious lava flows. And in the second picture, the lower one, you can actually see a crater and what appear to be rifts. And ray craters also, sending out bright material, they can be seen. And there are plenty of actual craters. And uh, I think it's very likely that these craters, you can see on Venus, are due to internal action. Uh, some craters on other planets are produced by meteoritic impact, but Venus has a very dense atmosphere. And it will take a very large meteor to plow through that and make a crater. And in any case, there must be a great deal of erosion on the surface. So it looks very much as though Venus is active. And um, even more interestingly, all the probes now, the radar probes, have shown the presence there of volcanoes, shield volcanoes. Now, we have shield volcanoes on the Earth, particularly in the island of Hawaii. There, for example, is Mauna Loa. And that was a photograph I took from the top of the adjacent volcano, uh, Mauna Kea, at a height of 14,000 feet. Now, Mauna Loa is active. Mauna Kea is not. At least, I very much hope it isn't, because right on the top of Mauna Kea, there has now been established one of the world's major observatories. And you can see the domes there. You may remember, we did a program from there a little while ago. But they are shield volcanoes, and they're massive. But it seems almost certain now that the volcanoes on Venus are of the same type, and they're concentrated in two main areas. The main one being what we call a beta regio. Now, here is an American radar map of that part of Venus. Uh, the things marked V, V14, 13, and so on, indicate the sites of the Venera Russian probes that have come down there. But I want you to concentrate upon Beta Regio and those two structures, Riamons and Theamons, because they appear to be shield volcanoes of precisely the same type as Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea, only probably a good deal more massive. And uh, whether they're active or not, well, we'll come to that in a moment or two, but there's very good evidence that they are. And quite apart from that, there's been some more very interesting research concerning Venus, and this is about the planet's rotation and clouds. Venus takes nearly 225 Earth days to go once around the Sun. Before the space age, we didn't know how long Venus took to rotate. We do now. The planet takes 243 Earth days to spin once round. And that's very curious indeed, because it means that technically, the day on Venus is longer than the year. But the upper clouds go round in a much shorter period of only four days. And here are three pictures taken from the American pioneer at different periods. And if you watch the cloud patterns, you can see the drift across the disk. And in that way, we can time the movements and the rotation periods of the clouds very accurately. And just to make things even more peculiar, uh, Venus spins the wrong way, as far as we are concerned. Instead of going round west to east, it goes round east to west. So if you are on Venus and you could see the sun, uh, which, of course, through those very dense clouds, you couldn't actually, the sun would appear to rise in the west and set in the east. So the upper clouds go around quickly, the planet goes around very slowly. But now we've got some more information, which comes from uh, Drs. Allen and Crawford using the Anglo-Australian Telescope, or AAT, in New South Wales. That's not the world's largest reflector, but I think it has very good claim to being the best, and it's worked in infrared as well as optical light. Now, Allen and Crawford have been taking pictures of Venus in infrared, and these are really quite staggering. There's one of their pictures. The sunlit half of the planet is white, and the rest, the, the red part, is the night side, which is glowing dull red. But in addition, they've taken other pictures, a whole series, which show details on the dark side. And there we can see again the bright sunlit crescent, and you can see extending from there what appear to be clouds. And these are, in fact, visible in the infrared. Now, what exactly are they? 
because it seems that these patchy variable clouds have a rotation period of 5.4 days. That is slower than the high altitude clouds seen in ultraviolet. So clearly we are looking further down into Venus's atmosphere. And it seems that what we are seeing there with the infrared results is not actually heat, but simply infrared sunlight diffused from the bright side through onto the dark side. And so in this kind of way, we should learn a great deal more about the very strange atmospheric structure of Venus. And this is entirely new work. But there's been something even more exciting. It seemed that there may well have been a violent volcanic outburst on Venus in 1978, the traces of which are detectable even now. And to say more about that, I'm delighted to welcome back to the sky at night Dr. Peter Catamole with the University of Sheffield, uh, who is, of course, a professional geologist with a special interest in planets and uh, volcanism in particular. Peter, welcome back to the sky at night. Patrick? Well, we know that there are shield volcanoes upon Venus. Are they active? What's your view? I would very much like to think that they were because this would mean Venus was a, a currently active planet and there aren't too many of those in the solar system. Uh, certainly from the radar information we have, we have these very large uh, shield-shaped structures which are certainly not dissimilar to the large volcanoes on Hawaii. So we do have a number of landforms which are of the correct shape and of the right sort of dimensions. Um, but if we uh, like to think about these, uh, what sort of environment are volcanoes active on the Earth? And these are really the questions we should ask mm -hmm. with respect to volcanism on Venus. Well, on the Earth, uh, um, of course, there are a number of volcanoes which are currently active. Now, if we are to map the Earth on the same kind of resolution as we have Venus, uh, we would find that a number of features show up. We would see that there are linear features running along the floor of the oceans and a certain number of linear features, such as the ones one can see down the west coast of South America, which mark points where volcanoes are currently active. And these are plates of the Earth's surface, large slabs of the Earth's crust, which are in movement, in motion. And these linear features are the points where the plates are meeting and moving. And this is where active volcanism occurs. Now, if we were to uh, view Venus at the same resolution as we view the Earth, one would find that one would not pick out, probably, very clearly, these linear features. Now, in fact, the Earth, of course, has no uh, oceans, uh, sorry, the Venus has no oceans uh, like the Earth, uh, and one effect that the Earth's ocean has is they depress the ocean floor, and this accentuates these linear features. Now, this wouldn't happen on Venus, you see. Um, so we would have problems in seeing these lithospheric plates and their boundaries. Now, what is a lithospheric plate? Well, it's, it's a region where the Earth's crust is shifting laterally. And at the centers of the oceans, we have the rising of magma, at the margins of the oceans, we have the rising of magma. Uh, and this is where volcanoes are concentrated. Now, we have other volcanoes on Earth which are not situated in these places. Hawaii, for instance. Now, in the case of Hawaii, uh, Mauna Loa is currently active. And that sits on a large slab of crust which is drifting across what's called a plume or hot spot in the Earth's mantle. Other volcanoes, like Mauna Kea, have drifted away from this hot spot and are currently inactive. So it would seem that on Venus, if we don't have plate movements, these large shield volcanoes would sit over hot spots for very long periods of time. And therefore, they would tend to become very big and the output of heat very localized. In other words, we're only going to get a very few active areas on Venus. So far, we've detected only two, Beta Regio with um, Rhea and Theomons, and Atla Regio in the Scorpion's Trail of Aphrodite. And uh, it's your view, then, that these volcanoes are going to be more or less permanent. They simply sit there over their plumes and go on erupting and building up. Well, I think certainly on the geological time scale, so they'll be there for many millions of years. But, of course, geological time is a very long thing. Certainly, in our lifetimes, they're going to be, I would think, active more or less continually. Um, and so in many respects, they are, they are different from terrestrial volcanoes, which are only active for relatively short periods of time. But there is considerable evidence, isn't there, that there are volcanoes on Venus? Oh, yes, I think there's, there's very little doubt. I say we, they are of the right shape. Um, we certainly have evidence um, that there are uh, concentrations of gravity beneath the Venus volcanoes, which means there are dense rocks, like volcanic rocks, which are concentrated beneath them. And this is the same kind of thing which we have on the Earth, beneath volcanoes like Hawaii, unlike Mount St. Helens, for instance, or that's a rather different kind of structure. Um, but there is other evidence, too. Um, there is evidence of lightning activity on Venus, and this is one of the pieces of evidence which has been used to suggest that Venus volcanoes are currently active. 
Now, of course, on the Earth, during a, an eruption such as an Icelandic eruption, one often gets quite strong lightning bolts concentrated over the center of the eruption as the atmosphere is disturbed, there are electrical discharges and so on. And interestingly enough, uh, by watching the um, information coming back from Venus, uh, one or two workers have noticed uh, a distinct concentration of lightning over the regions of uh, Beta Regio and Atla Regio. And so this is another piece of evidence which suggests that perhaps it could be due to volcanic activity. Is it, is it conclusive, though? But I d yes, this is a good point. I don't think we can say it's conclusive because, of course, in any elevated region which protrudes upwards into the, into the atmosphere, one is likely to get lightning discharges. So we must be very careful in drawing too many conclusions from this. But still, it does seem to fit in. And then, of course, we do have other areas on Venus which give every impression of being volcanic but don't show any traces of activity. I'm thinking of the, the Maxwell Montes, the, the highest mountains anywhere upon Venus, which looks very much like a volcanic area, but no lightning concentration has been observed there. Well, that's right. Well, Maxwell, of course, is, uh, is rather different. Certainly in the high-resolution radar images that we now have, one can see very clearly uh, a, a circular structure which appears to be a volcanic caldera, rather like the one, as you well know, one gets uh, in the summit of the Hawaiian volcanoes. But interestingly enough, associated uh, with Maxwell are a number of linear markings which are picked out in the radar images. Uh, some people have suggested these are perhaps lava flows, but they seem to run in the, rather in the wrong direction. They don't flow off the steepest slopes. Um, and perhaps a more plausible suggestion is these are what we call tectonic features, perhaps faults or even folds in Venus crust. And, and if this were the case, this would suggest that perhaps in the past, mm -hmm. Venus has had a, an active crust, and Maxwell may just have been active many, many millions of years ago, but is, is currently, of course, not active because the movements have ceased. Well, let's come on now to this suggestion of a vast eruption in 1978 that would probably dwarf our Krakatoa. What's the evidence in favor of that? Well, the evidence uh, for this uh, comes from Larry Esposito, who was studying some years back, a couple of years back, the eruption of a, a rather obscure volcano in Mexico called El Chihon. And he noticed uh, during the eruption in satellite records a great input of sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere as aerosols. And this uh, caused him to think back and reanalyze some of the pioneer data. And he noted that um, several years ago there was a, a 50 times greater amount of sulfur dioxide in the region of Venus atmosphere, um, localized around these particular volcanoes or query volcanoes that we've been talking about. And so um, there seemed a very good terrestrial analog uh, with El Chicon. Uh, we have this input of sulfur dioxide connecting up with volcanic activities on Earth. Why not on Venus? Well, it certainly seems that something did happen. I wonder what the actual scene upon Venus is like, Peter. It must be quite fantastic. I think it would be very alien to us. We'd see this dull red steaming landscape with these gently sloping shields and perhaps cracking lightning flashes crashing up from the tops of the volcanoes. I think it'd be very dramatic. Well, certainly our view of Venus has changed remarkably over the last few years. I can remember the time when we thought it might be quite a welcoming world. In point of fact, it's not. And I think we can say now that Venus is just about the most hostile world in the entire solar system. It doesn't make it any the less interesting, but it does approximate very, very closely, I think, to the conventional picture of what we call hell. Well, there's going to be one more Venus probe in the 1980s. That will be an orbiter which will go around Venus, complete the radar mapping, and we hope monitor any more violent eruptions which may occur there. And I think Venus has a great deal to tell us. But one thing I am quite certain about, Venus may be a twin of the Earth, but it's a very dissimilar twin. There's no chance of a man landing there. And all we can do, I think, is to continue to explore this strange, fascinating world from a very respectful distance. And so, from Peter and myself, good night. Well, just before the Saturday cinema...